Welcome back to my channel, Truth and Transparency with Audrey B. Remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you can see all my videos when I upload them. Remember to like and leave a comment and also to share. Let's get into the video. Hey y'all! Welcome back. Um, y'all, excuse the hair. The look is like after 10 o'clock, but I was determined to do this video because I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna continue to do it. I don't care how tired I am, I'm gonna be disciplined. Um, so thank you guys for always watching and supporting and just giving good feedback and just um just just making me feel so good and encouraging me to continue to keep on doing it. Um today is a little bit different. I have some questions. Um, that I'm going to answer that I, um, received and, um, I'm going to pick like two or three of them, um, cause I don't want this video to be like super, super long. And like I said, it's, it's late. Your girl's tired. Um, but the first question, excuse me, was why do I think people who are raised in the church and know God re tend to rebel against him? And it's funny that this question came up because all last week I kept hearing people say, you know, be all in for Christ, be all in for Christ. And they were sharing like their opinion of what that looked like. And one thing that stood out to me, which I think I've touched on it like a little bit before and maybe in the last video actually is like when you are raised in church or you go to church, that doesn't automatically mean that, you know, you are, you have a relationship with God. Um, I just feel like a lot of times people get the, the two confused. And for a while, I was that person like, oh, yeah, I know God. I grew up in church all my life. But your my life wasn't, you know, representing what it is that Christ is who it is, I'm sorry, that Christ is or how he expects for us to live. And... Um, one of the biggest things that I had to learn was just being obedient. And to me, um, and just saying yes to God. And to me, that's one of the things that I feel like, um, people that I've seen, you know, and know of, and even like I said, myself to, we rebel because we just think, you know, we know best. And we think like, well, as long as I go to church on Sundays, I'm straight. Like as long as I go to church, um, and I am a part of some type of auxiliary or, you know, I'm, you know, an usher or on the, I play the drums or instruments or I sing in the choir. Like God knows me. He knows my heart. Like, but Monday and I'm good because I'm there every Sunday or I'm always volunteering. But then you have to think about just because you're doing all that doesn't mean that you have a relationship with him doesn't mean you actually know him because like i said in the last video if you know god you will be a changed person you can't say you know god and you're still gr like holding grudges not forgiving people being prideful being arrogant being nice nasty <laughs> being messy you know what i'm saying being petty and it's like it's so easy for us to do that but i had to realize like if I say that I'm going to be all in, like I have to let go of those things and I have to truly say yes to God in every single area of my life. And one of the reasons, like I said before, like that people, I guess, rebel or just be like, you know, try to do their own thing is because that's what we like to do. It's our own thing. And we feel as though we have all this time in the world to do whatever and just be like, can't nobody judge me. Only God can judge me, which what I've heard plenty of times i'm sure y'all have too but that's not in the bible that's tupac <laughs> as a uh, reverend well pastor jerry flowers would say um but i just feel like it's just people just wanting to do their own thing and they just want to f be comfortable in sin period they just want to to just do them pretend on sunday leave and go right back to whatever it is that you know keeps them 
them away from living a disciplined godly life and like i said it's no judgment from me because like i said i'm i'm no better than anybody but I, i'm growing in god and maturing in my in my spiritual growth and i'm understanding like you have to truly be changed from from the inside out like you just because you go to church don't mean you know god just because you play the drums just because you even in the pulpit doesn't mean you know god like if your life does not depict like or or you know look like christ to me you don't know him and this is just my opinion this ain't all facts but i'm just saying like just from what i've been learning and what i've seen and how i've heard you know different conversations we just tend to want to do whatever we want to do and think that God's going to honor it. But if we're not prioritizing our time to spend with him, if we're not, you know, studying the word, if we're not, you know, being around people who have testimonies and in, in, of the faith and walk in faith and are truly like changed people we're gonna be messed up like we're gonna continue to think oh it's okay to do this it's okay to do that like no you shouldn't be giving any this none no space to the enemy to come in um what they used to call it a foothold no no you shouldn't leave any room for the enemy to come in and try to get you to think these things because those that's going to get you so caught up in stuff that doesn't matter and pull you even further away from god so i feel like people rebel because they're just comfortable with sinning. They think that they have all day, all year, all month, whatever to do them and then give God time later. No, he has to be the very top priority. And if he's not, like I just heard last week, you can't have two priorities. You can only have one. So if he's not number one, your life is going to look like that. You're going to continue to be uh overwhelmed you're going to continue to be stressed you're going to continue to be you know prideful arrogant nasty rude petty doing whatever it is you want to do comfortable in sin do, just just being a mess and then acting as though when you go to church it's hooping and hollering crying and remorse apologizing at the altar like oh god i'm so sorry i'm not gonna do it no more and then when you leave you go right back to it or somebody say something wrong to you then you're ready to fight or you arguing somebody look at you the wrong way your boo or somebody say something to you you already you you going off like you we we have to get to a point to where like i said before we are all in it's either all or nothing you cannot choose you have to choose like it says in the bible choose this day what you're going to serve you're going to serve god or you're going to serve the world and a lot of people are so comfortable with just serving the world and playing church and instead of truly repenting which means realizing what you're doing that it does not add up to the word of God. That it does not add up to what he has, his best for you. And realizing that you have to humble yourself before him first and foremost. And then turn away from sin. Turn away from those things. Turn away from evil. So that he can truly change your heart. As I've said plenty of times before. And allow you to, and, and then allow you to grow and and go through that process of becoming a true disciple a true follower where every single aspect of your life every single area of your life gives glory and honor to god and like so that was such a good question like why do people rebel period is because they just want to do their own thing and they think that they can hide the truth some type of way from God when he knows everything he knows our hearts he knows our intentions behind the things that we do he knows that when we're in church and we feel convicted or we feel some type of way because it's hitting different it's hitting us whatever the preacher may be talking about whatever you know some a song may be talking about you know what somebody may say or speak to us about or pray about and it hits us different because we know we shouldn't be doing it anyway. But and and then we get to crying and say, "Oh, I'm going to change. I'm going to change." But as soon as that opportunity or that weakness or that temptation comes, we right back at it. What happened? What happened to your apology, sis? What happened to your apology, sir? That's why it's re repentance is 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 what needs to be had, not remorse. Because, like I said before, that's just an apology. 
And apologies are nothing without changed behavior. And you cannot say that you love God and that you um, um, follow him if you don't change your behavior. And if you don't change at all, period. So people just, like I said before, they just want to be comfortable in doing them. And they don't care. So... That was my, my take on it. Like I said, this is not all facts. It's opinions. And it's what I'm, you know, what I feel as though God is telling me to say. So, yeah. Um, and if you wanted any, like, scripture or anything as, as far as walking in obedience to God and what that looks like. And then, in turn, what that, you know, what happens or happens to happen to two people who did not obey God and what he did you know um you can look at Deuteronomy 8 1 through 20 that's like I've read that so many times that's one of the scriptures is basically one of the title in it is like obeying God or obedience to God and it's just like um just saying showing you what it what it means or what it what the bible says about obeying god and if you refuse to and you continue to walk around arrogant and prideful what would happen and how god you know should have um have priority and be and get the glory and the honor in everything that you do because he's the one that gave you the power to be successful in the first place so y'all should read it um the second question do i believe therapy works yes i do i believe that god gives people gifts and abilities and um the the knowledge to go to school and um truly learn about the brain learn about you know different processes that people may have different ways of coping and all of that stuff so that here on earth we can get wise counsel um and also have people that we can vent to and help that are um that are licensed professional to help us along with jesus uh, a lot of people have said it Jesus in therapy. I believe it. Am I in therapy? No. But do I see a benefit of it? Yes. I just haven't found the right one um, yet. But I am praying on that. Um, because like I said, I believe that God gives people, you know, the, the wherewithal and the knowledge to help us out. Um, and as long as you feel comfortable with the people that the person or the people that you talk to and you've prayed about it and you know you feel as though this is something that God is telling you to do I say go all for it and also like I said before just continuing to ask God to um asking God for discernment in the area to help you or lead you to the right person um and if you don't you know like that person or you know vibe well with that person for God to send you somebody else um but to also remember that God is number one so you should you know seek him seek his face what the word says and just continue to be in prayer and um just just know that he's he's the ultimate doctor you know <laughs> as people say he's the ultimate doctor um Another one that I have is, uh, how do you know when you are hearing from God? Um, for me, this, um, this comes with a lot of prayer and fasting. So, and then another question was like, tell us about your fasting and preparation and, and, and how long you fast. So, when I first um, made the decision to, I guess, we can call it rededicate my life to God, um, I, I, I was always confused, like, how do people, you know, how do people always know, like, how do you just, how do you know that you're hearing from God? You know what I mean? And so when I decided to get serious about my walk with Christ 
and I, you know, would watch sermons about it. Um, I took um, like a eight week class about it as far as discernment. And it's funny because a, that class is, is started back up now. And today's um, lesson was about discernment. And basically, um, discernment and, be able, and being able to know God's voice over your voice and the enemy's voice. And one of the key things that um, the pastor said tonight was the strategy of the enemy is to confuse you it's to make sure that you cannot discern between him yourself and God so it's like all of these things that going in your head is like is it him or is it me or is it the enemy like so one of the main things that you have to do is pray 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 and through prayer and also reading the Bible and also fasting, it allows you to be free from, well, fasting, one, allows you to be free from distractions. Um, it allows you to strengthen your no. It allows you to deny your flesh because um, it just helps you to, because when temptations and things like that are, are presented to you or in your weak moments when, you know, you just want to give up and you, you know, you're trying to talk yourself into it. When you fast, you'll be able to be like, to, to override those thoughts with, um, you know, scripture, or you'll be able to, 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 to be disciplined because of prayer and faith and just continue to practice these type of things. So, um, like I said, for me, it was, you know, just constantly praying and being in a state of like, God, I, I just really want this to happen in my life. I, I don't know where to start, but I know, you know, my heart, I know you see me trying. So just Lord, just please talk to me, please. Lord, just help me to understand what it is you want me to do in this season so I can go to the next. And again, like I said, with, with discipline and just obedience, I, like I said, I fasted. Um, the first time I fasted, was for two weeks and you can fast from I fast from anywhere from food to um social media to tv shows to um time that I spend just like idle on my phone just constantly scrolling I decided to take two weeks from social media, two weeks. I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat all day until seven o'clock in the evening. I think this was like last summer y'all. So it's hard for me to remember, but something like that. So the durations for whatever, how long I remember, I, I picked two weeks because of something that I heard on TV as far as like, um, and I'm kind of trying to remember what that was like. You, if, depending on what it is you want, that that kind of like goes hand in hand with your time. So I was, like I said, healing from a breakup, trying to refrain from always calling this my, you know, my ex and ready to argue, ready to clap back, being in my feelings. And I really, really wanted to understand, was this person for me? And I don't know if I mentioned it before, but there was like a prophet who told me like, you know, um, this particular person, he's going to leave, but he's going to come back and he's going to be ready. And it was like, during that break, I was like, I was hearing that, but I was like, could this have been a false prophet? Could this have been somebody who just didn't know what she was talking about? So Lord, I, I just want to, I, I want what you want. I want to pick who you pick. I want to choose who you choose. So I decided two weeks, I want to, um, to be able to forgive this person. I want to be able to, you know, not wake up and this person be on my brain every single day and I can't function. And I just want to know why, 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 why. And my flesh just wants, you know, ride up and pull up. Like I, I just wanted to be free of those urges, be free of, and just be able to sleep. You know what I mean? So 
I, like I said, I chose two weeks. I um, stayed off of social media. I dug deeper into the word. I was, like I said, I, I, I downloaded the, the Bible app and I would do devotions every day. I had journals. And I would take notes on those, on devotions. And it was just like, and I would also pray two and three times a day. And then like gradually it became, you know, like a routine or a habit. And, um, some, some things that I had prayed for, you know, God was really speaking. And as I was praying, I was even looking on TikTok, y'all. And it was just like, you know, the algorithm changes when you start liking stuff. So it's basically like just, um, Christian TikTok videos. And it was just like different things I was getting from that as far as learning how to pray or books to read or, you know, um, um, people who would just start popping up and pray for certain things that it, I was asking God to send me. And I was just like, oh, wow. Like, so I, I just took that as that's a way for me that God speaks to me. And, and then in, in prayer, I would, you know, I, like I said, I had dreams, I, um, and things would be answered. Um, there would be just constant confirmation of maybe like the same scripture over and over in different things. Um, like, uh, what was it? Habakkuk three and two, I believe when I, when it was talking about, you know, um, things are set for an appointed time and it's, you know, wait on the Lord and it would not be delayed. Like I kept saying that, um, just those are just different ways that I feel as though God speaks to me. And maybe I turn on Pandora or YouTube and I go to my worship playlist and boom, there's a song and it speaks directly to me. Somebody, you know, might leave a scripture on Facebook or Twitter and it's speaking to me or as in prayer, I'm, I just, you know, concentrate and I'm, I'm free of all, um, of all distractions. You know, it's just me and God, excuse me. And, um, I remember telling my mom, like, I, I remember hearing a long time ago that when you hear from God, sometimes it sounds like a familiar voice. And at this particular time, the voice that I would hear, um, would be my grandmother's. And it was kind of like after I would pray and I would just sit there in silence and I would just, you know, just, just be in the moment, be in the spirit. And I would hear, you know, kind of like that, that granny, like sassy voice, like, I told you I got you. Don't worry about this. You continue to keep going. You continue to do this. You do you doing great. You you know what I'm saying it was just like wow. And it was just like the more time that I spent with God, the more time that I I I chose to 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 read his word or watch a sermon, the, the more my, the more mature I became and the more stronger I would be able to, you know, battle those thoughts and be able to hear like, no, this is definitely something from God. And like I said, confirmation after confirmation is just basically like repeat things like continuously repeating himself. So like I said, I know that I say all this to say I know that God speaks to me, but it's different ways. And I and I and I'm gonna say that it could be different for everybody, but as long I feel like as long as you're um carving out that time to spend with him to be able to hear his voice, uh, regardless of the busyness of your life, like you have to be disciplined in like when before I go to bed, I'm gonna pray. Before I put my feet on the ground in the morning, I'm going to pray. This is the time that I set aside on my break to pray or to read my devotional or to catch up on sermons and to write out those notes because those things help you as you go along in the process. And one of the other things was like, tell us about your journaling. Like really all I would do was watch sermons and take notes. How, just how you do in class and you can pause it. Oh, this is good. Let me write this down. This is for me. Let me write this down. Or with the devotionals, I would, um, like write down the day. So, you know, and I would, um, write down the scripture. I would write down, um, uh, the prayer that they put in there at the end, I would take notes from the devotional reading that they put in there. And like I said, all of those things to just constantly feed my spirit as I was fasting so that I would, 
so that I can turn to those things when something else comes up. And instead of going straight to living in my feelings and my emotions, I go to the word or I go to those notes and it, you know, it helps me to combat the the thoughts in my mind because like I said before the enemy wants you to be so confused he wants you to be so wrapped up with so many things where you can't hear God and you don't know if it's God or you think it's just you or you you know like you're not able to tell the difference and discernment is real and you only get discernment as as I've stated before and as I, I, I learned again tonight you only can get discernment by prayer the more time you spend with God, the more time you understand his voice. And when you understand his voice, the better off you are um, able to to be, the better off you be able to hear his, to, to use his wisdom, godly wisdom, and the more you're able to hear his voice in direction so that you won't continue to make those same choices or mistakes that um, hinder your development and hinder your growth. Um, so I hope that makes sense. So basically just <laughs> in a nutshell... I feel like I, I, by fasting and um, praying and just being disciplined in my devotion time with God allows me to be able to hear his voice more clearly because I'm not so distracted, you know, by social media or by people around me or by the things that may be going on in my life or situations that I may be in, good or bad, um, that um could hinder me from healing um hearing him and like i said i the duration of fasting that just depends on you i the i feel like for certain things that you want it could be a day it could be two weeks i've known people do six weeks or seven weeks like it's it's all for the betterment of yourself it's all to help you be able to control have self-control to be able to combat the lies as soon as you, cause, cause the enemy attacks your mind. So it's, it, and, and fasting helps you to be able to be like, no, I'm not going there. I'm not giving that person that energy or I'm not going there. I'm not going to thank those things of myself or, you know, you're like I said, when opportunity meets it, you know, your weakness, you're able to be like, no discernment. Like, I know this is something that, um, is not from God. So I'm not even going to give it my time. I'm not even going to give it my all because in the midst of me doing all of this and learning it, the devil was really trying to me. Like he was bringing back an ex who at first, at the beginning of all this, I was just like, Oh, it's innocent. It's cool. Like I don't see him in that way. I don't want nothing to do with him like that, but it's cool, you know, just to have that male attention. But then like I said, as I'm learning about discernment and being able to watch for the fruits of the spirit um, of people and being able to see, like, learn, like, who sent you? You know what I mean? Like, who who sent you? Why why are you back? You know what I'm saying? Why are you trying to come back in my life? And why are you going so hard? And and I understood that that too, that, that praying and that fasting helped me to, to, like I said, be able to discern things. And then it was able, helping me to be able to see like, oh, you're, you, you using that, you, you coming because the enemy's trying to get you to knock me off what it is I'm doing. And when I say he was trying so hard, I mean, you know, popping up at my house, calling me all the time, trying to say, you know, use the Lord as a way to get in um, with me just to see if he still got it or just to see if I will let him in my personal space or let him in my life again. So then, you know, like I said, the angel come, the enemy comes as an angel of light. So yes, look good on the outside, but the intention behind it was all the way wrong. And I, and again, I was wrestling with that because here I am fresh, somewhat fresh out of a breakup, but still, you know, wanting that attention. But then I'm like, all attention is not good attention. And then also I want to live my life for God. So I have to, so I have to let go of my desires. I have to let go of my flesh. I have to let go of the things I want so that I can allow the things that God has for me in. And this person just kept continuing, kept continuing. And yes, I was at fault too. But like I said, the more that I was growing cl closer to God, the more time that I was spending with God, the more I was able to learn the tricks and schemes of the enemy, the more I was be able to hear it like, uh-uh, no, I didn't send that. Uh-uh, no, mm, mm So I was just, and he didn't understand it. He didn't get it. He was just like, 
you changed or sent what you, what you what what caused you to want to get so close to the Lord all of a sudden like I know you was always in church but like you really different now you different different and so I'm just like hmm you know, you know, it's just like, wow, how fast and how, how clear and how different you see things when you truly, truly give it all to God. When you allow him in and you allow him to heal those areas and those spaces within you that at first, to be all the way real, I would have probably been his girlfriend again type thing. But now that I know different and I see different and I inspect people and I like, I got to see if this is from him or if it's not like I never I never used to pray before getting into a relationship and I did that with two people who have tried to be in a relationship with me and actually three and two of them were people from my past because the enemy is always going to try to bring up people from your past y'all that's why Fasting and prayer is so important so that you can have discernment on who is sending these people because as soon as you make the decision to change your life, the enemy is going to go so hard to get you to stay, go back to what's familiar or what you're so used to. And if you're not careful, if you're not truly spending that time with God, you're going to fall for it every time. But two people were from my past and one person um, I knew of, but, you know, it was just like a high and buy situation. And I kid you not, every time that I pray, Lord, is this from you? Or is this just, you know, my preference or the enemy trying to send them my ways to knock me off of what I'm, of what I'm doing. Every time I prayed that it was something that was revealed that I needed so that I can know that this was definitely not from the Lord. And the more that I kept telling them, leave me alone, the harder and harder they would come. The harder and harder they would come. And me, I used to be this like people pleasing person. Like even though I know you're not good for me or you don't have no good intention, I'm still going to let you in my space anyway because I'm bored or I just like the company. But again, all company is not good company. And I'm not going to be in a company of no foo and become a foo too. <laughs> So I, like I said, I would not, if it was not for just being able to discern what was going on around me, I truly, truly, truly would probably, probably be stuck in the same situation that I was so used to, which was just wanting a male attention, being a girlfriend, just to say, you know what I'm saying? Just to say that I had somebody. So, yeah. So yeah, that's. Like I said, God speaks to people in different ways. Like I said, I, I, it's either through familiar voices, confirmation, which means, you know, just constantly hearing the same thing over and over again, or, you know, seeing a something more than once, like a scripture. Um, and also I, uh, just being able to, to, to fast and and prepare your heart and mind and live in expectancy for what God is is trying to bring you or doing in your life. Um, I feel like those are the things that help you be able to hear Him. So those are well, those are the things that help me. Um, so yeah, so because like God said, uh, I, I believe I said in the last video, some things um, can be done through prayer and fasting, and those. Those are the ways that I truly, truly hear from God is through prayer and fasting. So I hope that answered your question. And um, I think that is it, guys. Um, like I said, it's already 33 minutes in. But I pray that this video made sense. I pray that um, I was able to answer some questions. I'm going to probably do another one um, and just maybe leave it at one topic i don't know um but y'all tell me what y'all think um and maybe leave some more comments in the comment section well some more questions in the comment section for me to answer in another video um later um i really didn't have a t um a topic so that's why i wanted to do q a I thought it would be um, a little interesting to see what people wanted to know or learn about me. But I pray Lord, that you guys um, 
just continue to trust the process, continue to trust God, continue to stay in the process, continue to um, just, like I said, make room for God in your life, make him first priority so that you can be equipped to understand the tricks and the schemes of the enemy and how he moves and how he's seeking to kill, steal, and destroy and to be able to combat him and be able to have um, maturity and be able to have growth and to be able to just know that whatever he says to you is a lie, whatever, um, whenever he opens his mouth, he is a lie. And for you to be all in, to give God your yes, regardless of what you've done, regardless of what you feel as though you're not worthy of or enough of, you are enough and um, just allow God in and let him change you. And open your eyes to see things so totally different. Like he is doing for me and he's done for plenty of us. And um, just continue to just keep trusting and keep praying to fast and just continue to, to lean on God and ask him to help you in every single area. And do not, do not, do not forget to like and share and comment and subscribe if you have not. And I will see you guys on the next video. I am so sleepy. <laughs> but I love you guys. And thanks again um, for the questions. Y'all know who y'all are. Um, and remember to choose joy, to choose peace, to choose love, and to choose to be all in. Love y'all. Bye. Thanks for watching, everybody. But before I go, I forgot to mention that another way that God speaks to us is through interruption. Uh, just like I interrupted this ending of the video. And um, a lot of times we, we go into things without acknowledging God or asking if what we want as far as jobs, careers, relationships, or whatever it is, um, if it's really from him, and the way that he um, he comes in sometimes and speaks to us and pulls at our hearts and minds, and um, and it can come in many ways as far as like relationships becoming toxic, um, you know, people annoying you, frustrating you, getting on your nerves, and you're just like, why why is all of this coming out of a sudden? Why is all of this starting to happen? And then you realize that it's not always the devil. Sometimes God is interrupting and revealing things to you, um, so that he can show you like, hey, this was not for me, and um, this is the time for you to be free of all of this, be free of every distraction, every annoyance, um, and just give me your heart, give me your time and allow me to change you from the inside out. And then you will see the things that I have for you. Because as I say all the time, God's plans and ways and his, his thoughts of you are always good. And, um, a lot of the times we like to settle. A lot of the times we, um, think like, you know, make excuses. And as I mentioned in this video, the enemy comes as an angel of light trying to deceive you to get you to think like it's all good and it's all gravy. But at the end of the day, you start to see like, nah, this, this, this ain't it. This ain't the one. This ain't what I'm supposed to be in. So those are, that's another way that God had to come in and show me like, hey, this is what I do too. It's not always the devil. It's me trying to redirect you to something better because my plans are good for you always. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.